Let's continue with block entities. Let's serialize some recipes. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at custom recipe serialization. What does that mean? That's a very big word. Of course, it's actually fairly straightforward. We can basically make JSON files, recipe JSON files for our custom block entity. And that, I would say, is actually pretty cool. So what are we going to need for this? Well, what we're going to need is a new package. First of all, in our tutorial mod package, right click new package, which is the recipe package. And inside of there, we're going to make two new classes. First of all, the mod recipes class, as well as the a little bit longer lightning channeler recipe class. Now this is going to implement the recipe of simple inventory there. So making sure that those are important correctly here, I'm going to implement the methods. You can see there's a lot of methods that we have to implement. And we are actually going to copy over a lot of this class. But no worries. Once again, I will actually explain. So first of all, what we want to copy over is everything up until the mm, let's say, we're going to get the first two methods here, as well as the enum. So I will show you what I mean with this, basically with the matches method. So let's actually do this. So now this actually should not throw any errors, right? Okay. So we, first of all, we have a weather enum. This once again is something that is completely specific to this case, because I want something inside of the JSON file that can say, hey, this can only be crafted when it's thundering. This can only be crafted when it's raining. This can only be crafted when it's clear. This is why I have this. This is not something that every recipe needs. Very, very important. Then I have some fields here, the identifier field, the output and the recipe field, those should be fairly self explanatory and should basically always be the same. In theory, uh, you can have some differences. For example, you might have a default list for the output as well. If you for example, wanted to make something like a weighted output or something like that, basically having something random happen, then you could, for example, have outputs there as well, different ones. But for the time being, this is going to be it. The actual constructor is very, very self explanatory. It literally is just this constructor for all of those four different fields here. And then the get weather just returns the weather here. And the matches method that actually is very interesting, because this is basically where the magic happens, so to speak, right? So the actual matches method looks at the recipe items that are inside of the recipe, as well as the inventory, and it's going to compare them. Now, this is also, in this case, custom code. So here you have to basically write code. And here, if you don't know Java, you're going to get very lost because here you actually have to compare stuff. So you can say, see here, does the first item of the recipe items match the first item or thus item in slot zero of the inventory? And then we're going to stay the same in the second one. And if they both match, we're going to return true, meaning that this matches a particular recipe, and then we can go forward. So this is a very important thing. The matches method is basically where the entire logic here happens. So that is a very important. And then what we're going to do is we're going to copy over the next four methods, which is exactly these four. So the craft method is just going to output, uh, return the output here, the fits method, in this case, we're just going to return true, we're not going to worry about this for the time being, the get output method also should make sense, we're just going to return the output that copy in this case. And then the ID is just going to be the ID. Now the serializer and the type are a little more interesting, because the type we're actually going to make a static class inside of here, which is going to be very straightforward. So I'm just actually going to copy over the entire class, this is literally it. So that's all that we need to do here. And then we what we can do is we can just say type dot instance. And we're done with this. So that's really nice, very easily done. And the serializer is a little more complicated as well. So that's something that we need to definitely take into account. So I'm going to actually also copy it over and we're going to go through this, of course, as well. So this is a, another static class called serializer, which implements the recipe serializer of this recipe. Once again, we're gonna have an instance here because that's just gonna make our lives way easier. And also an ID. This is the name, right, given in the JSON file. Very important. So this lightning here is gonna be the type that we have to define inside of our JSON recipe file. And then we have three methods: the read method, the read method, the write method. The read method reads something from a JSON. And you can see we're basically using the JSON helper here to get different things, right? So we can basically get via the shape recipe out from from JSON, we can get an item stack and read that in in the output here. 
we have something like the weather. It's just a string, and that's why I created the get weather by string method right up here. Right, so this basically just returns a weather based on the string that we have, and so on and so forth. We then get an array for the ingredients. We turn that into a default list and just put this in here, and then we're going to make a new recipe at the end. And so this just is the call to the constructor right here. So this is reading from the JSON file, and then we have a read. This is basically reading from the network and writing to the network. What's very important is that because we're using a packet byte buffer here, so basically a buffer, this has to match what we read and what we write. So here we're writing in an integer, and then the first thing we're doing is reading an integer. And then we're going to be writing an ingredient, so we're going to read an ingredient. So that's very important that this always matches perfectly, because otherwise if you have a server and a client and you're going to try to join, it's not going to work. Basically, it's going to say, hey, something doesn't work. So that's very important. And you can see what's really cool is that we can even read an enum constant and write an enum constant. I really like that that is actually a thing that works. That's really cool. Once again, those have to match. And then also the enum here, of course, once again, is something that is particular in this case. It doesn't always have to be present there. So once again, some Java knowledge. I'm going to say this until the day I die. If you don't have Java knowledge here, you're going to get very lost very fast. So whatever the case may be, though, in the get serializer method, we can now return the serializer dot instance right there. And that is pretty much it for this entire class. So while it is quite complicated, the individual parts are not actually that crazy. And then the only other thing we need to do in the mod recipes class, where basically I'm going to copy over the register method. And this just is registering the serialization and the type. So you can see this is the registry for the recipe serialization under, of course, mod under our mod ID, and then the serializer.id. And then you get the instance of the serializer, same with the type, you just get the ID of the type, and then the instance of the type. That's literally it, all that we need to do here. Now we need, do need to call this actually inside of our tutorial mod class. And I'm going to call this say right here. So mod recipes dot register. And that's it. That's pretty much all that we need to do here. And the recipe is now done and it could already be read in. Now, of course, we don't have any functionality with it yet. So, of course, we need to go into our block entity class and actually change some stuff there. So in our block entity class, now what is going to happen? Well, we're going to do some major rewrites here. And the first major rewrite is the following. We're going to have three new fields and I'm actually going to copy those over as well. Now, this is very important, right? This is a property delegate. Now, the property delegate is what we're going to give the screen handler so that it knows what the progress is and the max progress. Now, in our case, what we're going to do is basically the max progress. You can see how many ticks it will take to craft an item. OK, fair enough. You could, in theory, also define something like this. in The recipe would also work. However, in our case, we're just going to have this basically be done here. In our case, also, we're going to make this divisible by 21 just because of the pixel count for our progress arrow that I've shown before is 21 pixels. And if it's divisible by 21, then it's just going to move very smoothly across. That's the general idea. And the progress is going to be incremented every tick. That's the general gist here. So this is going to take around about three seconds for something to craft because, of course, 63 divided by 20 because 20 is the number of ticks in a second. That's the general gist. And the property delegate, you can middle mouse button click, you can see this is basically just a list of integers, as you can see. That's pretty much all that it is. So what we can do is I'm going to copy over the setting of the delegate inside of the constructor here and see this dot property delegate is equal to a new property delegate. And then the get, you can see we're just going to get the progress and the max progress. We're going to set the progress and the max progress and the size is going to be two because, of course, we have two different variables that we're tracking. Why do we need this? This seems you know, awfully complex. We need this so that the progress and the max progress integers are tracked both on the client and the server. Because right now we're starting to cross boundaries from server to client, from client to server, and this needs to be tracked. And this is how you do it. Uh, you can basically add as many property delegates as you want. Those all have to be integers. But of course, with integers, you can do a lot of stuff. So in theory, you can always almost, you know, save anything in here in theory. So that is something that you can do. This is basically expandable however you want. You know, you can have 20 things in there and pass it over. No worries there. Right. Then what we want is we actually want to pass in this dot 
property delegate in here. So this is, of course, right now going to throw an error. No worries. We're going to change this. And then I'm actually going to copy over all of the different things that I've changed. So basically, all of this is now obsolete, right? All of those things I'm going to copy over. I think that that's like five methods, six methods, right? Including the new tick method. This is, of course, once again, all available to you in the description below, GitHub repository or individual gists. The tick method now is changed a little bit, right? Once it has a recipe inside of it, we're going to just increase the progress. So basically increment the progress, right? Then once the progress has reached the max progress, then we're going to craft the item. Fair enough. And if the actual recipe is not in there, we're always going to reset the progress just so that we have it. The has recipe method is actually a custom method as well. So where we're going to get just the world and then a simple inventory. Inside of that simple inventory, we're just going to put basically the entire of the entities a simple inventory is sort of a helper for us right we're basically going to copy over the entirety of the entities inventory so the block entities inventory and then we're just going to say hey does this have a match so you can see we have an optional match which is basically just we're going to get the recipe manager get first of this type so we're going to say hey this type of recipe does this inventory in this world have a particular match here and if this is present great then we're going to evaluate the weather that just simply means that hey get the weather from the inventory from the recipe so that the weather that is specified in the recipe is the same as in the world that's literally just what it does right evaluate the weather so if it's clear it's not raining if it's rain it's it's raining and if it's thundering then it's thundering that's the general gist here evaluate weather very straightforward method in all things considered and then we're going to keep going here, right? Once again, can insert amount into output slot, simply checks once again whether or not we can actually put this in there. And then the can insert item into output slot simply says that, hey, if either the output slot is empty or that it's the same item, then we can progress and continue with the recipe. And then we're going to progress. And each tick of this progress is going to also increase the progress bar. Very important. And then we're going to call the craft item method we're basically going to go through the same thing, right? If match is present, then we're going to remove the stack, remove the stack, and then we're going to set the stack to the output. And then if the weather here is thundering, then what we're going to do is we're going to spawn a lightning bolt. And then at the end here, we're going to reset the progress again, just so that we basically don't continuously craft a new item. We're basically resetting the progress. And that's pretty much all of it. Now, once again, here we have the issue. So we can go into the screen handler method or the screen handler class rather. And what we just need to do is we just need to add right here a property property delegate or delegate. And then let's just reformat this a little bit. And then up here, what we're going to do is we're going to say a new array property delegate of size two in this case, because of course, this is the size that we basically want. And we're also going to save the delegate inside of a field. So this is just a new field. And then after here, we're just going to say this dot del property delegate is equal to delegate. And then last but not least in the constructor, we also need to add properties delegate. And this basically enables us to synchronize this from the server to the client. And I'm going to have two new methods as well. That is the is crafting method and the get scaled progress method. Now, this one is very important here because here, as you can see, we're just going to get the max progress and the progress out of here, right? So progress and max progress, and then the progress arrow size. This basically should always be the width if you're going from left to right, or if you're going from top to bottom, of course, the height of your progress arrow, because this is so in pixels, because this is the scaling of the time that it takes to craft the item. This can be a little complicated. Like I said, you can always play around with this a little bit, no worries there. So then the screen handler is also done. The issue here has been resolved. And now we just need to take a look at the screen. And the screen basically only needs one thing. And that is exactly this right here. So this is the actually just the handler in this case. And then that's the handler as well. You can see that we're just checking, hey, is this crafting? And the is crafting, by the way, is just whether or not the progress is more than one. That's or more than zero, that's it. And then we're going to get the scale progress. And we're changing, you can see the width here with the progress, the width that is being displayed in the GUI. So from this one right here, right, where we paste it in here, basically, and then the width that is being displayed is going to be displayed with the progress. So as progress increases, more and more of this arrow is going to be displayed. That's the general gist of why we're putting in the progress here. Once again, I highly recommend 
playing around with this a little bit, you have all of the code available to you, this is probably going to be the smartest thing. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy over the two methods or the, rather the two recipes that I've already created here. And we're going to see, first of all, we're going to have the, as you can see, the type is lightning, tutorial mod lightning, weather has to be clear. And then we have the ruby and a stick and then a ruby hole will generate or, you know, craft it. And then we also have the glass pane and a pepper here. And then a ruby is generated, but what we need is thundering for this. So after having done all of this, very important, make a new world for this. Because if you do a lot of changes in the block entity, most likely that can break something in the old worlds. Just saying. Let's see if it works. All right, we found ourselves in Minecraft and as you can see, everything still works fine. So let's first of all see if we can craft a... Oh, with this and there we go the progress starts and there it is and now what we should see is that we can't actually craft a second one because of course the hoes don't actually stack therefore we have to take this out before a second one starts to generate here and everything works great that's amazing and now what we can see is that this does not work because currently it's not thundering so if i now change the weather to thunder we should see this work and actually let's put a second one in just so that we can see there it starts and then it actually will reset and co continue again. So there you go and a second one hits as well. So that is really cool and that is like really the power of the recipe serialization because now first of all either you know mod pack makers can add their own recipes to it or you can add them very very easily without changing the code at all basically. Right, so once again, we went through a lot of different things here and I did copy over a lot of the code. Once again, everything is available to you. I highly recommend copying it over, trying out and just trying to understand everything that is happening here. If any questions remain, of course, always feel free to ask in the comments below. I will try to answer them best of my ability. But otherwise, basically the two-parted saga here for the block entities has ended with this. And I hope that you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So, yeah.